Right, I tell you the champs, and if you listen to the internet, especially some of these drama queen YouTube channels saying, don't buy the top, it's the worst laptop. No, come on, let's get serious. Is this thing worth buying? And I reckon if I got this on the deal, I'll get it. I'll explain why in a sec. I'm going to address, you know, the elephant in the room that people will be talking about or have talked about. But let's get the specs out of the way. This thing can come with a Ryzen 9, Ryzen 7, Ryzen 5. I had the 4800H. Tick for the CPU. Comes with Windows Pro or Home. If you want to upgrade your laptop from Windows Home to Windows Pro, check out my description. You can also get Office 2019. Got a discount for you. Also comes with DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM. So two slots there. It's in dual channel. 15.6 inch display, you can get 60 hertz, 144 hertz display, of course, we're going to talk about that in a sec, up to RTX 2060, 1660 Ti's, a 1650 Ti and a 1650 if you want to, you can even put a hard drive in these things if you want, if you get the one with a small battery, it does have Wi-Fi 5, so they saved a bit of money there, and that's the thing, right, this is entry level budget sort of price, for ports, you've got everything you want bar Thunderbolt 3, so we're talking two USB Type A's, 3.2 Gen 1, one USB Type C, 3.2 Gen 2, with DisplayPort out, a USB 2.0 Type A, Ethernet, HDMI 2.0B, and of course the AC jack. It's 2.3 kilos, 24 millimeters thick, or should I say virtually 25 millimeters thick, and you can get the 48 watt hour or the 90 watt hour battery. And yeah, the battery life is actually decent for a gaming laptop. You know, if you're getting your five hours, which I'm getting, I'm happy with that. Build quality, they're built tough. Ironically, that's the name of the laptop too. They're supposed to be military spec. I mean, I'm not going to take it into battle, but I have dropped a tough laptop before and yeah, they are tough. Now, should you buy this thing? According to Drama Queen channels, no, you shouldn't. I mean, I'm not knocking that. If you want a Drama Queen YouTube channel, (laughs) go ahead and do it. That's up to you. But I think this particular channel has an axe to grind with a Mizzou site. I don't know if they send them stuff. But anyway, let's get down to the brass tacks. Should you buy this laptop? And considering the price point, and it's very competitive, this price point, okay? Everything checks out in terms of, yes, Ryzen CPU is the fastest thing out there. Awesome. The graphics card's up to 2060. Can't complain there. 144 hertz display. Well, let's talk about that first. Well, it is slow. It has a slow response time. So it is ghosty. That is 100% true. It feels like sort of like a 60 hertz display. So is it that bad like everybody's saying? Well, I could game with it no problems. Yeah, it is slow. Even though it's 144 hertz display, it feels like a 60 hertz sort of display. If you want to know how it feels, I'm not affected by like ghosting stuff on smaller displays. Like if I get a bigger screen, like 27 inch or something like that, and it's ghosting and it's slow and it's 60 hertz, like I feel like I'm drunk. On the smaller displays, not so much. So my advice to you is just don't think of it as a 144 hertz display because it feels more like a 60 hertz display. And when you think about the price point it comes in at and you compare it to, say, what Intel has, so if you're buying an Intel system with a 2060 in it, it's going to have a 60 hertz display at this price point anyway. So that's just sort of how it is at this price point. I really wish it was better, but I still enjoyed gaming on it. So each to their own, I guess, some people are more sensitive to it. So I don't think at its price point, especially if you can pick it up on a deal and maybe even pick up that Ryzen 5 one, really cheap, I don't think that's a reason not to buy it. I still think it's worth buying at this point. Now, when it comes to the heat, how hot it is, it is true. I've never seen a laptop go to 105 degrees, and this one did. But I don't know that there's actually any penalty to that. Because I was playing Battlefield, and I played it for ages. I was waiting for that clock to go under 4 gigahertz. So I played it way longer than I usually do. And no, it would not buckle below 4 gigahertz. It was going up to 105 degrees. But that clock was staying constantly over 4 gigahertz. So if I compare that to an Intel system, there's not many doing 4 gigahertz in Battlefield. Now, would I like it to be cooler? Of course I would. I'd love a laptop to be silent and get full performance. But given that the CPU clock still stays high, there's no real penalty in terms of noise because all gaming laptops are loud and this is no different to that. Gaming laptops are loud. I've been going on about it for a long time about my ears ringing. So again... Would it stop me from buying it? If I'm still getting over 4 gigahertz in, say, Battlefield, where I usually see the CPU buckle in laptops, 
I'm seeing 105 degrees. That's actually a safe limit for these Ryzen CPUs. And the performance is what you'd expect for these sort of parts. I think it's clear now that Intel systems are faster than Ryzen systems in 1080p gaming. I think it would be different if you would 1440 or, you know, 4K or something like that. Especially with the higher end cards. You can't get the higher end cards with the Ryzen's at the moment. But as long as you know those two things, it's going to be hot. The skin temperature was still fine though. There are a lot of laptops that had much higher skin temperatures than this laptop. So I guess at the end of the day, if you have any concerns about it, you know, Zeus are pretty good with warranties. And if you know those two things, that the screen's a bit ghost, it's not slow, it's not going to feel like a, you know, an ultra fast one millisecond, 144 hertz display. It's going to feel 60 hertz. 60 hertz? <laughs> Is that a word? You know what I'm talking about. It feels more like 60 hertz than 144 hertz. And if that's a deal breaker... And seeing the temperature gauge go up to 105 degrees is a deal breaker. Well, then don't buy it. But certainly you can pick these up for a really nice price. And compared to, say, an Intel system, you could probably buy, a, you know, an external display as well. And then it will probably cost what an Intel system would sort of cost. So you know those two things, the heat, the screen. I still had no problems game with it. It was fine for me. I wouldn't want to do competitive, like, FPS gaming on it. But, but I still enjoy playing it. If there's any reason not to buy this, it's because it hurts my eyes. I don't know what they're doing with these fake bolts and making things look like, look, I don't know. That's not my bag. So anyway, now you're better informed. Catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.